Hello and welcome to Learning with Lovo. In this video, I will be covering a Case 1 carrier recovery using the supercarrier in its first early access release and the FA-18C Hornet. The key commands I will be using aside from the HOTAS axes are landing gear, flaps down, cage uncage, arresting hook, okay, around speed. nose wheel steering, Almost. trimmer climb, wheel brake, COM 1 and 2, and Hornet ball. The weight limit on a Hornet landing on the carrier is 34,000 pounds. If you weigh more than this, you will have to dump fuel or jettison stores before you attempt a landing. You can see your weight on the checklist page. Let's begin. So you finished flying off for whatever reason you want to land on the carrier. There's nothing really stopping you from flying straight there and landing. But if you are interested in cooperating with other players or realism, then you will want to follow a few procedures. The steps are, let the carrier know you're coming, let the carrier know you're near, wait your turn and let the carrier know you're here, when it's your turn, enter the landing pattern, and then hopefully land or repeat the pattern until you do. Let's take a look at that again in some more detail. You're flying and want to land on the carrier. First, we need two pieces of information. The location of the carrier and its radio frequency. Both should be available in the briefing information, which can be accessed with left alt and B. In this case, the carrier is broadcasting a TACAN on 71 X-ray, and its radio communication frequency is 127.5 MHz. We can input this into our Hornet by pressing the TACAN button on the UFC, inputting 7, 1, Enter, ensuring X is highlighted, and holding the on-off button until on is displayed on the screen. We then box TACAN on the top left of the HSI page. By controlling the scale of the HSI, we can see the location of the carrier by the TACAN symbol. We also have range and bearing information here, and a marker on our heading tape on the hood, as well as range information on the bottom right. We want to announce inbound to the carrier before we get any closer than 50 nautical miles. So, let's input the frequency in radio 1 by pulling the selector knob, inputting 127500 and pressing enter. We can now press the COM1 key, select ATC, select the carrier, and select inbound. Your pilot will then communicate your location, altitude, wingman, and fuel state to the carrier. It's worth noting here that you are referred to as your side number. The carrier will then respond, the important information being that it is case 1, and the BRC, or base recovery course, which is the carrier's heading. It will also say, report seen me at 10, and the comms options have changed to show that message. That is our next step, we will fly towards the carrier and select that option at 10 nautical miles range. While we fly to the carrier, let's input the BRC as a course heading. This will show us the carrier's heading on the HSI, which is very useful later on. Hold the course switch down until C cell appears on the UFC. Then input the BRC, which was 116. A line now appears on the HSI, letting us know the orientation of the carrier. Let's fast forward to 10 miles away. Press the COM1 key and select see you at 10. The carrier asks our fuel state and instructs us to switch to tower. We may expect to be given instructions to join the queue or marshal here. The marshal in case 1 is a 5 nautical mile 250 knot circular stack to the left of the carrier starting at 2000 foot and going up in 1000 foot increments. However, at this stage of DCS it isn't implemented. If we were in multiplayer, I would ask on the radio who is the highest in the marshal. As this is single player, I will just continue as I am. Where you join the marshal depends on your heading. You join it where the tangent of the marshal matches your heading. When you are close to the carrier, your pilot will automatically let the tower know you are in the marshal. Tower, 301, overhead angels, 5, holding hands with 305, low state 6.2. 301, tower, roger, BRC. The signal is Charlie message means cleared to enter the brake. That is the section between the initial point and the downwind. 
It begins at 800 feet, 3 nautical miles and 350 knots behind the carrier. A quirk of the Marshall is that if you need to change altitude, you would descend in the bottom half and climb in the top half. So we will fly around to position 3, then descend, accelerate and extend. This is the approach completed and we are entering the brake. Spin it. If the pattern is too full for you to enter, but you have been given the Charlie signal, you may be asked to spin it. This is not yet implemented with the AI controllers, but other players may ask you to spin it. You should maintain 12,000 feet and 350 knots and fly a 5 nautical mile left hand circle, extending and coming back down into the initial. Hopefully by the time you enter the initial, some of the other players have recovered and you can enter the brake. The landing pattern, or braking the deck. The point of the brake is to quickly slow down, configure for landing and enter the landing pattern. There is a lot to do in a short space of time whilst controlling the jet. I will go over it slowly, then show a narrated example, then a full example with live narration. Getting even okay at this takes a fair amount of practice, so be prepared to rep this quite a few times. As mentioned, the initial point is 3 nautical miles behind the carrier at 800 feet and flying at 350 knots. We fly past the carrier and look to see the deck is clear. You can drop your hook as early as you like, but this is the latest I recommend doing so. I would also choose the radar altimeter here. We then do a hard level turn to slow down, configuring for landing as soon as possible. This means gear down and full flaps, flying at the speed that sets our angle of attack to the correct angle for our hook to hit the deck correctly. This is called flying on speed. We then descend to the landing pattern which is at 600 feet on speed. When level with the stern of the ship, we turn in while slowly descending to line up with the angled landing deck of the carrier. We then use the meatball for height, the deck lines for lineup, and the AOA indicators for speed to hit the deck in such a way as to catch a wire. The LSO calls may help here as well. That's the short version. Let's take a more detailed look. We're next to the boat at 800 feet and 350 knots. We need to make a brake turn. If you're experienced and confident, you can start this immediately. This will give you less time to configure for landing. The more time you need, the further you extend. One nautical mile is a good mark for beginners, but extend as far as you need. The brake turn should be level at idle throttle and at a G, 1% of your airspeed. 350 knots, 3.5 G. Releasing the back stick to lower the G as your airspeed decreases. As soon as you hit 250 knots, lower the landing gear and select full flaps. Expect the nose to bounce as the flaps lower. Try and maintain 800 feet. You will roll out of the turn after 180 degrees, running parallel to the carrier in the opposite direction. The HSI is useful here, as at the 10 nautical mile scale, the wingtip of your plane's icon should touch the course line when you are in the correct flight path. As you slow, the nose will drop. Start a slight descent and use the nose up trim instead of back stick to maintain it. When the E-bracket middles on the velocity indicator, you are on speed. From now on, you use the throttle to control pitch. Increasing throttle will give you more lift and cause you to pitch up and vice versa. This will take some time to get used to and takes fairly fine throttle control. There is no perfect throttle setting, you will be constantly walking them back and forward. You will hold 600 foot and look at the carrier, as the next step occurs when we are level with the stern of a ship. At this point, start a 30 degree left turn slowly increasing your descent to about 450 feet per minute at halfway through the turn. This can be seen on the HUD above your altitude. Use the cage uncage key to lock the velocity indicator to the center of the hood if it goes off the edge. Maintain this to 90 degrees. Now you can glance at the carrier to see how you're doing. You can now use the carrier as visual feedback. Continue the turn past the back of the carrier, rolling out in line with the angled landing deck. Uncage the hood if you caged it. On final and calling the ball. You've done the fiddly bit. Now it's time for the other fiddly bit. From now, focus on the carrier as it has all the information you need. Use the lines you can see on the deck to line up your jet. 
Use a meatball to know if you need to climb or descend more. Continue to fly without the use of forward or back stick. At three quarters of a mile, the LSO should ask you to call the ball. You can press the call the ball key command. Bear in mind, he may not ask you, and you should press the command anyway to get instructions from the LSO. If you cannot see the ball, you should call Clara from the comms menu for more guidance from the LSO. When you are on glide slope and lined up on speed, you should be able to continue monitoring the information from the ship all the way to the wires. You may find the plane gets floaty close to the deck from ground effect. In the future, ED say they will implement the burble, which is an area of still air just before the deck due to the ship's superstructure blocking the wind, but this is not in place now. Once you touch down or feel you're going to miss the deck, push the throttles to max dry power. The cables will hold you if you trap. If not, then you will avoid sinking into the water. Congratulations, you've recovered. Now that you've landed, you can raise the hook, fold the wings, tap nose wheel steering to put nose wheel steering on high gain, and taxi off of the runway. Let's talk about bolters. So you've missed the wires. You should already be at max drive power. Keep your plane configured as it is and use the throttles to climb up to 500 feet. Turn slightly right to fly BRC and if there are other players, look for a gap in the landing pattern. When there is a gap, climb to 600 feet, bank left 30 degrees until you have turned 180 degrees and repeat the pattern as you just have from the downwind. Let's talk about the LSO. The LSO, or Landing Signal Officer, is there just to get you down safely. He will provide useful feedback once you are on final and have called the ball. I'd recommend listening to him. After you land, he will give you a grade in the form of a code that pops up on the top right corner of the screen. It can be quite complicated, and I can't tell you what they all mean. However, here are some useful tips. It starts with your overall grade and finishes with a wire you caught, three being the ideal. It then gives you details starting with the beginning of your final and progressing to the end. Codes ending in X refer to the beginning. IM means in middle. IC means in close, AR means at ramp, WO refers to a wave off. The information before the code will be something like LUL or LUR for line up left or line up right, H for high or LO for low, and many others. My trap here was graded as OK, drifted right at start, lined up right at start, caught wire 4. The lack of other information for in middle or in close means there wasn't much wrong with those parts of my final. Example. I'll leave you with the pattern I flew and try to announce what I was doing as I went. I hope you found this useful. I will be releasing guides for launching and case 2 and 3 recoveries in the future. Thanks for watching. Learning with Lovo. Alright, there's 800 feet. I maintain that while we slow it down. Take a look at the deck. Deck is clear. Back in the cockpit. It's a little bit fast now. I'm watching the range on the Tacan for one mile. That's where I want to do it. Okay, idle throttle, roll and pull. There's 3.4, yep. Easing it down, easing it down, there's gear down, flaps down, there's the 180, level it off, try and control it as the flaps kick in and make it bounce, nose down, start the trimming, power on a little bit to control the dip. How's that? One more notch. Oh, that's one too many. Okay, we are at 600 feet, so let's get the nose up. There's the round down. Rolling on in. I want to get that nose up. I don't want to drop so much just yet, so power's coming on, and then off. Lock the hood. Cage the hood, sorry. More power. Control that 30, 30 degree angular bank. 
the nose down a little bit now take a glance there she is I think I'm a bit low so I'm not going to drop the nose too much more nope forgot that hook was not down alright there she is lining myself up wait till we can see the ball there's about one mile I feel like I'm low so I'm going to maintain that for a second yeah I am low so let's keep that power on keep the velocity vector above the ship Call the ball. Need to be right a little bit. I am coming right. My velocity vector is right. Alright, there's glide slope. So power off a little bit. And bring it on. The meatball is going to start coming down. Off again. I'm, I'm high. i got to drop this a bit. Ah, oh, i got to wave off. So... Let's get 10 degrees nose up. Time for BRC. Any other planes? No, no one to collide with. And we're going for 600 feet. Let the nose come down, power down. Nose will drop, power up to arrest that. 30 degree left bank. I think I forgot to engage my velocity vector at the carrier, which is why it probably wasn't going where I wanted it to. Alright, we're past the 90, coming up on the 180, which is downwind in the pattern. And almost. And there she is. Alright, we're a bit low, so let's get the nose up a little bit. Okay, there's the round down. Turn in, get the nose down. Just a little bit. Power off, that's too much nose. There she is, I feel like I'm in a better altitude now. But I feel like this turn's a bit too tight, so I've got to lessen that a little bit. Engage. Yep, I'm way left. But I am on glide slope. But that's good. Let's keep it coming. Where are we at? About time to start calling balls. Okay, lineup is better. But I'm a little high. Where am I? Bring it down a touch. There's the lineup. Now I'm getting very high. Let's get it down. The mill, full mill. There we go. Uh, 